At JWT, we film our shows for documentation purposes. During this unprecedented time, we are pulling stories from our extensive archives to share with you during these eight days of Passover. Please enjoy. The Passover story was both meaningful and meaningless to many of us Soviet Jews. We were trapped behind the, the Iron Curtain, as President Reagan called it back then. I was only a child when I left, too young to remember what it was really like over there, behind the great red line that divided us. With Passover, we simply didn't know. We weren't allowed to know what our forefathers had known. All religion had been outlawed by the Soviets who followed an official policy of state atheism, as there was no greater god in this world than communism. All other religions and their followers were persecuted, punished, pursued until Jews, Christians, and all other believers were too scared to teach their children what it was to have faith. Red was everywhere in those days. Red for communism. Red as the background for statues and printed images of our dear father, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, who stared out from every corner and crevice, watching over us to make sure we fell in line or else. Red was a symbol of the socialist state, our national terror. Terror of being found out that you were not a true believer. So, crossing over our Red Sea had a different meaning to us looking back. It was a crossing over a sea of red for communism and a sea of red blood for all all our forefathers and mothers who had lost their lives and their freedom in the name of a belief that became increasingly hollow. We were Jews. We had been promised equality by the Bolsheviks, and yet we were never truly equal. My dad was beaten almost daily after school by neighborhood children screaming, Dirty Jew, to remind him of his second-class status. Red was his blood dripping brightly onto the snow in a poor neighborhood of Mother Russia, following one beating after another. For my family and me, the Promised Land was an opportunity for us to start anew, to write our own Haggadah, our own narrative of Exodus, to become what had never been possible for us on the other side of that red communist sea. Free. To worship or not, free of persecution, free to build a home where our children could flourish without the iron fist of dirty Jew pummeling their ears. Having crossed over our Red Sea, we were finally free to tell our stories out loud.